A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The disciples of John approached Jesus and said, Why do we and the Pharisees fast much, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus answered them, Can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. And how is everyone? Blessed. Blessed in the house of the Father. Jesus is the bridegroom of the church, preparing for the wedding at Calvary. And at Calvary, he gave his life for all of us. It's where he offers all of his being, his humanity, so his divinity, his heart, his soul, all his love for our salvation. What is the fast that is the fruit of the wedding of this bridegroom? What happens when we encounter Jesus on the cross? What happens with us when we draw close to Calvary? to contemplate what is the cross of Jesus Christ. A new path begins. For each one of us, the cross comes in many forms. Perhaps it's through the faith of our parents or our families. Perhaps it's through the sufferings. Above all, the sacraments. The victory of the cross is where we begin to this essential fast. What is the fast that the Lord wanted from His apostles, disciples? To fast from sin. Fast in everything that separates us from God and enter in a new path. And so, it's for the cross that we are here and contemplating the love in the cross where true fasting begins. Some years prior, meditating the love of Christ, on the love of Christ, Mother Della, our founders, wrote, the cross becomes for us, those whom we believe in Christ, and the most eloquent sign of the love of God, and the most perfect model of the truth of love. It is contemplating the cross of Christ that our eyes are illumined with the truth of love. It's in the school of the gospel of the cross that we learn the true meaning, the true meaning of love, of its essence, dignity, its beauty, its splendor, and its path. What is the purpose of Lent? that we may be witnesses of the cross of Christ, that we understand the price of our salvation, that we humble ourselves in the presence of the love of God, and we repent from the heart for everything that separates us from His love. And to repent means to change. So what do we have to change? The 
history of every saint passes through the cross. Like St. Augustine says, every saint has a past, every sinner has a future. And the sacred space between the past and the future is the cross of Christ. It's to enter into the love of Jesus on the cross where we begin to receive and desire conversion. And what is conversion? Renouncing sin, the renunciation of sin. And so in the presence of God, we want to begin Lent, asking for the grace of an interior illumination, asking the Lord, what do I need to change? But from the heart and truly, and contemplating the cross, we receive the light and the grace of changing. Recently, when we were in Holy Land, I was able to visit the Basilica of St. Stephen, which is outside of the walls of Jerusalem. And I arrived at the Basilica like six, around 6 p.m. in November, so at this moment, it was very dark. I passed by the Dominican Friar House. I entered the Basilica and everything was dark. And entering in the Basilica of St. Stephen, I found the lights. And when I turned on the lights, I discovered a surprise. In the Basilica of St. Stephen, they have an altar to who dedicated to St. Stephen, not to St. Stephen, but to St. Paul. So imagine that the Basilica of St. Stephen in Jerusalem, the altar, the main altar of the Blessed Sacrament in the center, on the left, an altar dedicated to St. Paul. The place where St. Paul asked the death of St. Stephen. And the martyrdom, when the martyrdom of St. Stephen, so the martyrdom of St. Stephen obtained the conversion of St. Paul. The cross of Christ is all powerful, brothers and sisters. It begins with the great gift of asking forgiveness to God for our sins but also it invites us to forgive. We, it invites us to truly enter the Christian life. Jesus says that we are a city, a city on top of a hill that must illumine others. And he says that we are the salt of the earth, the light of the world and that our good works may glorify God the Father. Perhaps now when we are beginning Lent, we can ask for the grace of drawing close to the cross of Christ. Enter the silence of Calvary with Mag Mary Magdalene, St. John, in the arms of the Blessed Virgin Mary with the centurion and profess, who professed to Calvary that he truly was the Son of God to enter the school of the cross to encounter the possibilities of God and the truth of God. And what happens after the encounter with Christ on the cross? A new path new possibilities, hearts full of the love of God, hearts with the capacity to love even one's enemies, even to change the world, so it be a world full of God. We conclude with these words of Mother Adela. 
conversion of heart is to discover and contemplate before our eyes a new path, the most excellent path, the most perfect, like St. Paul says. In his letter to the Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 31, it's this path that the great apostle of the Gentiles wants to show us. It's the only one which we can fulfill fully. The only one that with certainty we can attain human and Christian maturity. The only path that the Lord has marked for us from His incarnation to His cross. This perfect path is love. And this love is demanding. That is, it requires that we walk the narrow path. And with conversion of heart, to break the selfish paths of self referentiality indifference, selfishness, utilitarian selfishness, to expand the tent and give ourselves with joy, always seeking to do the good to others. What is the purpose of Lent? To walk the most perfect path, which is the path of love that Jesus revealed to all of us on the cross. We ask the Blessed Virgin Mary that with her and her we can contemplate the love of Christ. This love that was pierced for us that obtained the conversion of not only St. Stephen but also of St. Paul that even after this encounter, he could write the hymn of love, which is the vocation of every Christian. All for the heart of Jesus, through the heart of Mary. <laughs>